Hey, it's Mimi from HeyMimi.com with a neat desk document and receipt scanner. I wanted to make this video to give you a heads up on a couple of obstacles I encountered that really almost had me to the point of putting it back in the box and sending it back where it came from. In the end, I'm really glad I kept it and I've learned a few things that I really wanted to share with you. Three things I want to tell you about has to do with videos and reviews that you're going to find online about the neat desk. I want to give you a little warning about making sure you check how old those videos are because the company has really stepped up the software. They do seem to really listen to feedback by their viewers. So just keep that in mind when you see something. Take a look at the date. If it's even a couple years old, that information is not current and almost every complaint that I came across online, I'm finding has been long since resolved. In the product that I'm using now, those complaints seem to be obsolete as far as I've been able to tell. So check the date on the review that you're reading. The second thing I wanted to talk about was what I found to be the easiest way to install the software. More on that in a minute, but I also think I will put a link here to a full video about all the obstacles I ran into trying to update from 5.4 to 5.5. And then the third thing I wanted to bring to your attention is when you first start scanning stuff, you might get a little bit alarmed. It's not instantly filling all the fields in on the documents and receipts that you're scanning. And you may think that you're just taking a bunch of pictures of paperwork, but I found that even if it doesn't fill in a single field in those pre-made fields, that if you want to fill them in, you can, but anything you're searching for can be found with the search feature without ever entering a single bit of information by hand. The third thing, which is probably the first frustration you're going to encounter, is installation of the software. And the main thing I want to tell you about that is if you're on a PC and you're running Windows XP or Windows Vista, by all means, go ahead and use the installation disk that came with your product. I'm making this video in 2014 and that CD should be called Neat 5.4. If your computer runs Windows 7 or 8 or something later, you are going to be alerted that you should upgrade to Neat 5.5. And my recommendation is to save yourself some grief and instead of installing Neat 5.4 from the installation disk, to just go straight to their website and download a fresh install of Neat 5.5 before you ever install anything at all. It's difficult to know what exactly the software name is. Is it Neat Desk, Neat Connect, Neat Receipts, Neat Works? By Monday when I started working on this video again, I found that the links were more direct. So I think that's a good sign that they do listen. I'm going to go back to the thing about the reviews because it'll help you feel sure that it's going to be worth all the trouble. Of watching this video and of installing the software and learning this thing which is very quick if you follow my directions it'll all be very painless okay so I just want to show you some things I've come across which once which I actually believed and it kept me from buying the neat desk for years here we are at YouTube at hey Mimi DIY and let's just search for neat desk so a lot of this is really old even three years Two or three years is really old, if you ask me. I think you should look for things that are 2014 and no earlier than that because I am finding that it's a lot of incorrect information or old information that has now been remedied. You can go to here to filters on YouTube and say that you just want to look at stuff that was uploaded this year and that'll get rid of all that old stuff. And I'll bet you'll find a whole lot less negative stuff about the Neat Desk because for one thing, this desktop unit has come down in price. It, now it's about $300 because they have a new product called Neat Connect, which is wireless and it has more buttons on the screen. But I'm just not willing to spend $500. So let's go back to what you're normally gonna see, which is just, let's get this year out of here. And we're back to all this old, outdated stuff with a whole lot of really unfair comparisons that just are not legit. Like my biggest gripe is this one, this one comparing the Fujitsu. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are at this Fujitsu SnapScan 1500 and it's going to compare it against the Neat Desk. There's a whole lot wrong with this review. 
is expand this. There's a little button here and you can expand it to see when it was uploaded. So this was uploaded over three years ago. And you can see a lot of people are saying, oh, thank you so much. I almost bought the wrong scanner. I had just bought Neat Desk and saw your review and I removed it from my cart. And that was just like a month ago this person said this. And it's really a shame because all of the stuff in this review is just total BS, I'm sorry to say. It was not a really legit comparison even three years ago. He just has a lot of complaints that simply do not hold water. It's just a bunch of stuff that either never applied or no longer applies. I'm going to zip through this ridiculous review. I went through for about 20 minutes just debunking every bit of misinformation that he presents here. So I'll jump ahead to the end of it. I'll add a link here to the entire debunking of this review if you feel like watching it. So let's just watch the end of it now. Evernote is not a Fujitsu software. Evernote is a totally third party thing. Neatworks does all these things. Does he go through Neatworks and explain that you can do the exact same thing in that? Or you could bring it into Evernote if you want? No, he implies exactly the opposite. All of these things are already free with your Neat Desk. That's $200 less expensive. The thing that persuaded me was that the Neat platform, uh, I consider it proprietary and by that I... No, you can consider it proprietary. It is not proprietary. I mean, it's really hard to get information out. No, it's not. <laughs> I will demonstrate. I've only had this less than a week. It's not difficult. You can get some information, no. but um, you, know, you can't write custom scripts for it. Okay, you that's his complaint. You can't write custom scripts for it. He doesn't look into the built-in customization things that you can do without a custom script. Are most people watching this going to be writing custom scripts? You can't um, view your receipts on various mobile platforms as you can with Wrong. the Evernote. Um, Fujitsu solution and ultimately being a part of a proprietary platform was um, was a huge sway factor. Wow, this guy did not do his homework. Um, and uh, uh, I hope this uh, review was useful to you. Thank you. No, it wasn't useful. It was only useful to me to show how biased and misleading a review can be. Now, I say in my review here that I don't love everything about this thing, but it really makes me angry when people present something as a fair review when it's not. I, in my reviews, I try to say what I don't like about things and w whether I think they're worth installing software and the time it takes to learn it. So far, I paid 300 bucks for mine, and so far, um, I'm happy with it. And Neat Desk imports exports to Quicken, to QuickBooks, to Evernote, to Dropbox, to Excel, to your email program, anything you need to export it to. It's not proprietary. And this really should be taken down off of YouTube. Um, if I were the neat company, I would lodge a complaint with YouTube and tell them that it's really defamation because it's all just a bunch of baloney. 2014, none of this is true. I don't know if you can or can't write custom JavaScript, but I don't know many people who would do that. If that's a selling point to you, then I guess maybe some of this applies. But he didn't even look at the built-in customization options. He didn't even appear to glot, you know, skim over them because they are built into the thing. You don't have to write custom code. Okay, so now here's the thing. Amazon lists reviews starting with the most helpful. And I suggest if you want really truthful information about what you're about to buy now, not what this guy bought in 2009 and what this guy got in 2008. This is 2014. It's giving people information from six years ago. In the technology world, that is a lifetime. Okay, look at these, 2009. Just because these reviews have been here since the dawn of time, you don't see any of these most helpful reviews anywhere near 2014. Okay, so what I suggest to you, if you want to see the truth about the product you are buying now, where this company has obviously listened to complaints of customers, let's go to most recent. And now let's see what people are saying. Amazing, five stars, awesome, five stars, excellent, excellent, great technical support, 
I mean, look at this. It's like a whole different machine. Most recent, here's what you want to look at. It's a whole different story, and it's really sad that people don't know to filter the reviews and look at something that really applies to the software and the product that they are purchasing now at a price that's probably come down about $150, $200. So I really, really urge you to pay attention to that. I'm going to leave it at that because I think this pretty much speaks for itself. Just search for Neat Desk Reviews 2014. It is not proprietary and it's just really unfair that people are getting this impression of this product. To take the time to get it installed and give it a chance before you start getting frustrated or before you start reading other people's old opinions about it. I did not expect to like it and I expected to have a lot of problems with it and I'm already thrilled that I got it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see my follow-up videos on this or a lot of other techie stuff.